Welcome back. He was once the best high school basketball player in Brooklyn, an immigrant who fulfilled his American dream and went on to play at the highest level. But there's much more to Gary Forbes' story than basketball. On a daily basis, he battles a disease that few professional athletes have had to deal with, all while trying to get back to the NBA. We learn more in this News 12 Overtime profile on Gary Forbes. At a glance, he is your typical NBA player. Knocking down jumper after jumper in an empty gym in the offseason. But these days, Gary Forbes would give anything to be a typical NBA player once again. I mean, this is the NBA, man. It's the best job in the world. You know, we get, we get spoiled. Forbes would know he's played 111 games in the NBA, but none since the end of the 2012 season. Forbes came to Brooklyn from Panama when he was four years old, and it was a perfect fit. Everything that you know, I've grown up, all my friends, the culture, the, the way I talk, the way I think, everything is, is, is Brooklyn. And like so many who have grown up in the borough of Kings, Brooklyn means basketball. Even before he got to Benjamin Banneker High School, Forbes' feel for the game was evident. When he was in junior high school, which is seventh grade, you know, he would come to the practices, work on his skills. When I saw him, I thought he was going to be special because he would ask a lot of questions. In high school, he was special. As a senior, he led Banneker to the city championship at Madison Square Garden, where they were beaten by Sebastian Telfair and Lincoln, a loss that still hurts. You know, we played a good game. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say it was the refs. Could have been. Forbes used that as a springboard to the University of Virginia, but then transferred to UMass after two seasons. When he went to UMass, he was that big fish, and that's when he separated himself from a lot of his peers. In just two years there, he scored more than 1,100 points, was the Atlantic 10 Player of the Year as a senior, and led the Minutemen to the 2008 NIT Final, where they lost to Ohio State, once again in the Garden. Forbes' stock seemingly couldn't get any higher. He was destined for the NBA. But few people knew that he had been diagnosed with diabetes at the age of 19, and it didn't become public until he was preparing for the 2008 NBA draft. The way I messed up was not letting people know I had diabetes. It's one of the reasons, that was, it's one of the reasons why I didn't get drafted. It kind of just popped up on, you know, doctors' charts like, you know, whoa, this kid, you know, has diabetes. No one knew about it. Had a big draft party and everything. Went undrafted. It was horrible. So then Gary had to work his butt off. You know, he did some stints overseas. His first two seasons as a pro, seven teams in five different countries, places abroad like Venezuela and Israel and in this country, like Sioux Falls, South Dakota, before getting a shot to play for George Carl and the Denver Nuggets in 2010. He walked up to me and you know, grabbed him on my shoulder and was like, you ever made a team before? You ever made an NBA team before? And I was like, nah. He was like, you know, slap me on my butt. He's like, congrats. Playing alongside Carmelo Anthony, Forbes played 63 games and averaged five points for a Nuggets team that went to the playoffs. He also turned his diabetes affliction into a positive, starting the Gary Forbes Foundation and developing a website, type12.org, which provides support for others who battle the disease. Uh, and I tell them that not to use it as a crutch. Um, they, if I can be able to live a normal life and, and play professional sports. Forbes doesn't just put his name on the foundation and cut a check. He's involved in every aspect, including planning the annual celebrity softball game in Prospect Park. To see the person that typically would kind of be just behind the scenes and not on the calls or in the meetings, the fact that he shows up and he's on time and it's, it's something that people really admire. I've gotten so many letters and calls and, and messages from, from, from young kids you know, on, on what their struggle is and what they're going through. And I've been there before. Now Gary's going through a different struggle. Three knee surgeries in the past 18 months are the reason why he hasn't played in a competitive game since December of 2013. But on his mind during these summer shooting sessions is getting invited to an NBA training camp for another shot at the league. You know, if they let me in, I'm, I'm, there's no way they're going to let me out. So uh, I plan to make an NBA team this, this, this upcoming season and uh, you know, get back to doing what I love to do. One note, the two interviews with Gary were conducted over a period of several months, which accounts for his change in appearance.